So I don't have slides, so I just have a few points to make, so we have time for discussion. Um, I'm going to talk about four aspects from the outside perspective, uh, and two of them I would like to stimulate you and try to push the envelope a little bit, because this is what Bill has done eight years ago with this fantastic project, and I think uh, you may want to ask yourself, what's your next best thing in terms of pushing the envelope here? Uh, so from an outside perspective, talking about training, I think you need to put a lot of effort into expanding your training sites uh, to all of your network sites and provide people that are not part of the network the opportunity to come and learn from you. Uh, I think resources are limited. You won't be able to necessarily expand and expand and get more national or international sites on board. But what you are doing, what you have developed here, is so helpful for people to come and learn from you and then take that home to their home institution, potentially. I know this from fellows when I was at Hopkins who participated in rotations at the UDP. It was probably one of the best rotations they ever had because of the structured way of how you go about these very complex, undiagnosed cases, which, to be honest, many of us clinically only do if you have a real interest in this. So providing a structured uh, approach to teaching this to many people, in my mind, if you can afford it, it's going to be tough. But even internationally, opening this up, it's going to be a resource issue, probably not so much monetary-wise, but people-wise. How many people can you train? So that's a difficult, I, I, I completely understand that this, this is challenging, but I also think you still have some room to grow this, and, and I would encourage you as, an, as the outside expert to, to give this a lot of consideration, because I think you are the blueprint for something incredibly good, and by teaching many others, you can just expand without necessarily investing a lot of money other than your time and teaching. The second point I want to talk about is a little bit about the international collaborations. I know you have started this, and um, we at SickKids and we in Canada uh, have been thinking about how can we collaborate with you, and I know that the people in the UK have started to think a little bit about how can we associate a little bit and collaborate with the UDP project. I think the issue which I hear a lot from other people, it's not my personal concern, but I guess I want to share with you what other people say is, what's in it for your collaborating partner? So coming up with a framework where true collaboration is bilateral and not unilateral is an important feature. There was something people talked about you're the last, you mentioned that you're the last hotel, which is true for some, but I will tell you, I had some of my patients who I care a lot sent to this program just to see whether I'm missing something, but I want to continue to be involved in the care of these patients. I think you may underestimate some of the physicians who are either encouraging the patients or are asked by the patients to participate in your program, and then how do you continue to be involved? And most of the people want to be involved. So if you think about international collaborations, setting up maybe a little bit more of a clear framework, what is the collaboration going to look like and how, how are different parties going to benefit from this would be really important. So now I'm talking quickly, I don't see the time sign up yet, about the two issues which I feel like this is pushing the envelope a little bit, but you have a network system that may allow you to do this. We talked a little bit about epigenetics, and Brendan started to answer some of the questions about epigenetics and the variability among our patients. I think he's right, obviously, that with phenotypes and the collection of phenotypic, phenotype uh, variants within this network, you have an unprecedented unprecedented accumulation of data, but why not take it actually further and think about how can you expand beyond the phenotype data? What The data we are not collecting really in an organized fashion are the actual environmental data that probably have an impact on the epigenetics, right? This is what really is driving epigenetics. 
And within your network, I wonder whether you could start to begin to think about a blueprint of how could we incorporate these kind of data to really try to make sense. Everybody now t talks about big data, right? This is a new uh, wonderful term everybody uses. But within your system, you might be able to tackle this problem a little bit and try to think about bioinformatic opportunities to not just collect the data, but actually connect them within a small group of uh, patients that can then be extrapolated to the greater good. And the last point I'm going to make is, in the beginning, we talked a little bit about management and treatment and therapies. We are at the cusp of a completely new era, which I like to call interventional genomics. It doesn't really matter how we want to call it. But with new genome editing technologies being just developed, I think the kind of data collection and data sharing you can have without necessarily having a full natural history data is something which I would encourage you to think about how it can be helpful for future therapeutic opportunities for th some of these patients. Because we're going to have to change the paradigm how we think about clinical trials. Right? We won't be able to do a clinical trial the way how we are used to do clinical trials, not even within the rare diseases where we sometimes are fine with 20, 30, 40 patients. Lots of the trials we're going to be thinking about within the next five to 10 years will be on an N of one. And I have some great hope for uh, your program and your network to have enough data together that within this N of one, you might be able to look at outcome measures and success of some of these treatments which is going to be really tough and difficult. I stop here. Thank you.